Hello, and welcome to Travel Stories Unpacked, the travel podcast where we talk about all things from the silly to the serious and everywhere in between. I am your host, Ashley Newton, and thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you spending some time with us. And I am so excited for this week's episode. We've kind of alluded to it a few times, but this week we are finally doing it. We are unpacking tourist traps. So, of course, we had to bring back one of our favorite guests, Annie Yu, who is also our show producer, but probably one of the most avid tourist trap avoiders that I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. (laughs) So, of course, Annie, when we said we were going to talk about this, you were like, oh, I'm coming on the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have very uh, strong opinions about this. Definitely some hot takes. So for all you keyboard warriors out there listening and watching, uh, get ready. I might (laughs) ruffle some feathers here. (laughs) Well, and I think that's a good place to start is sort of just like discussing the idea of tourist traps as a whole. Like, what does that mean to you? Are they always inherently bad? Are there some good ones out there? Like, what makes something a tourist trap to you? I think everyone's travel experiences are different so what i would consider a tourist trap maybe you won't not you but like the oh general. we already know that we're gonna disagree on something <laughs> oh for sure <laughs> um because at the end of the day everyone's travel experiences are different if you're the one spending a f- small fortune to get somewhere because you really want to see something even if it is a tourist trap then who cares yeah absolutely but there are some that are just not an exception <laughs> <laughs> Like, we always have our opinions, but I think at the end of the day, we do respect, like, your travel style is going to be different sure. than mine. But, like, to me, a tourist trap is something where you you go, you experience it, and then you're left kind of like, what was that? Mm-hmm. Like, why why did like, why did we do this? Yeah, like, it's, it's not overwhelming or underwhelming. It's just kind of, it's just whelming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to be whelmed? Buckle in. <laughs> so... So, of course, we're going to start with the good old U.S. of A., mm. I think. You know, keep it keep it local. Start about some of the things that, you know, I've honestly, like, either heard really bad things about or personally avoided. So we wrote down a few areas. So I'm going to start with something that I think has circulated a lot the last couple years, and that is Plymouth Rock. <laughs> So, like, Plymouth Rock, if you've been there, please let me know, because this is just something I learned all about the internet and to be honest I didn't give Plymouth Rock much thought after like what third grade when they're teaching you like those stupid rhymes and like whatever but like after that it's not like it's a very integral part of like U.S. culture it's not like we're all like yes the rock you know what I mean (laughs) like oh Plymouth Rock you're amazing but I saw a picture of it and it's literally a small rock couldn't even classify it as a boulder (laughs) it is literally a small shambly rock and it's in a cage, like a metal cage. So like to me, if I included that on my plans and then went all the way there to see a small rock in a metal cage, I would just be so disappointed that I was stupid enough to do that, you know? I don't know what it is about the USA. We just love famous rock formations. <laughs> But what it's not fame. Like, that's the thing. Like, there's nothing awe-inspiring about it. Because I get it if you're like, wow, I mean, look at this mountainside or, like, the pictured rocks up in Michigan. Like, those are, like, really cool natural phenomenon, right? This is a stupid rock in a cage. <laughs> and uh, if you can defend it, let me know. But, like, that is one that I've never sought out. <laughs> I could see that. I mean, can you imagine putting all the time and energy and money to plan a trip just to go somewhere for it to be such a letdown. For me, the number one attraction that comes to mind is the American side of Niagara Falls. Annie truly hates this. I (laughs) despise Niagara Falls. And I just want to say, like, I've been as a kid and I've been as an adult because I do have family that live in uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. So when we would go visit them, we would drive that way, make it like um, the border crossing at, I think, Buffalo. Um, And it's just so not impressive. I'm like, you park your car. You go up to the banister or whatever, and you look at it for, like, five minutes, and then you're like, okay. Yeah. Like, and I will say the Canadian side is a lot of fun, but the American side is just, like, gross and desolate, and there's just, like, seedy casinos. Classic. And, yeah. <laughs> so and I'm classic. like, I get the same amount of joy watching my bathtub fill up. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how I feel. Niagara Falls just ain't it, and it smells. Like. <laughs> I haven't experienced the U.S. side. I did really like the Canadian side. Yeah. Granted, I feel like I was like the perfect age for that. You know what I mean? Like still pretty young. And we did like even more super touristy things like we did 
they had like a wax museum in Canada. We did that, which what do you what do you think about wax museums they're weird is that in and of itself a tourist trap yeah for, like madame Tussauds or whatever it I is i don't know i think those not are, well versed in yeah. the wax museum i think that's culture. like the big famous chain yeah <laughs> chain wax museums you know i have i thought they were cool when i was a kid but i think also literally they were cool like it was air conditioned <laughs> So, like, you spend all this time, like, touring these streets and walking around, and then you get to be an AC. So, I think that might have been, like, a larger appeal to me at the time. It's just, like, oh, it's, like, quiet and dark and cold. So, it was, like, a sensory break almost. Yeah. But um, I would much rather watch House of Wax than I would oh, go to a, a wax museum. what a cinematic masterpiece that oh, was. Oh, absolutely. Paris Under, Hilton, where's her Oscar? It was underrated at the time, I think. It's, yeah, absolutely. You know? uh, much, <laughs> although these things are overrated <laughs> so overrated and another one that i think stands out talking about movies and stuff is hollywood like truly as a whole but specifically like the walk of fame thing and the hollywood sign itself like i was in la for like one day for work and there were people that were like we're gonna go do this and i was like not me <laughs> like have a good time but there's no way i'm spending my limited time here to go look at a sign like it just doesn't mean anything to me for sure i mean and hollywood boulevard itself is not what you think it is it's not glamorous at all there's actually a lot of homelessness there mm -hmm. unfortunately walk of what is it the walk of fame with i think the, so with all the stars yeah, and the, yeah turns out like you don't even have to be a celebrity to get a star you can just pay you buy it yeah you buy it yeah. like it's a stupid amount of money although but. i won't lie when i saw i don't even know if this is real news <laughs> but i saw that uh robert Robert Eglund, I'm not sure how to say <gasps> yes. his name. Yes, um, Freddy but he, Yes, mm -hmm. um, and then John Carpenter are getting their stars. And obviously, we just talked about it. You pay to play, whatever. But horror is always underlooked in, like, every genre. So mm -hmm. I was kind of excited to see that. But not to the point where I'm going to go, like, haul myself over there and look at this stupid <laughs> thing in the ground. Like, I mean, essentially, like, I could start a GoFundMe and be like, hey, Annie wants a star on the walk of... Fame. Should we do that? <laughs> I'd be curious. Like, put my name next to, like, Fred Astaire or something. Because <laughs> we are equals. Yes. <laughs> Clearly. But, yeah, I just think that whole thing. And, like, another thing that I think speaks to a tourist trap is they're just really not authentic. Yeah. And, like, that to me is all of Hollywood. There is nothing about Hollywood mm -hmm. that is authentic to how most Americans live, even most Californians. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's nothing about that that's real. Now, and if you're going with that in mind if you're coming and you're visiting just to experience sort of the i don't know because i don't get the appeal but i guess <laughs> if you know that you're going there and this isn't a real true experience and just something you want to check off a list then like like go for it you know that kind of reminds me of like some chinatowns in the u.s mm, okay. so um like the chinatown in manhattan is very authentic like it has a long history dating way back then there's some Chinatowns that almost feel like they just they're built as like a pop up shop almost. Yeah. Like you ever been to like, like an amusement park where there's like a Western town? That's how some of those Chinatowns are. The one I think of sometimes is Chicago. It does feel like that sometimes that it's not really a Chinatown, um, but it's more for the tourists. Like San Francisco Chinatown is great. Yeah. Um, and of course Manhattan, like I said. But yeah, there's some Chinatowns that just feel fake. And the best way I heard it described to me was that way, where it's built for tourists. Because um, a couple months ago, when I visited my sister in Tokyo, uh, we went to a Chinatown in Yokohama, and that's exactly what it was, the way she described it. It's all tourists. It's all, it's, you, there's actually yeah. not a ton of Chinese people living there. Well, and that's what I think is sort of the pitfall of tourist traps, is if you are truly a person that thinks you are experiencing something real, thinks that, oh, this is what the mm -hmm. locals do. This is an integral part of society here. <laughs> and then you find out, like, we just put this up for you idiots. Yeah. Just come spend your money here. Like, that, that, like that's truly disappointing. And mm -hmm. another reason to work with a travel agent, because, like, they'll research and they'll be like, and of course, like they'll still play into what you want to do. But I think you at least if that is important to you, have that expert to provide that extra mm -hmm. layer of information. But you brought up Chicago. <laughs> okay. So I got to bring it up. <laughs> no. The bean. 
what is that why do people like this why do people wait in line (laughs) the pictures are ugly the bean itself is ugly the reflection is ugly the whole thing about it is stupid and like i was visiting my friend there and she was like do you guys want to do the bean i was like if you want us to go like if you want to take me to the bean i will go to the bean but like, do you do you often go to the Bean? Is this like a part of your Chicagoan <laughs> lifestyle? She's like, no, I just take like you know people there when they're visiting, and I was like, we can skip it. We can absolutely skip this monstrosity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I <laughs> I lived in Chicago for a few years, and I okay, not gonna lie, I thought the Bean was cool. Why? When I, Please because, help me because get it. I was a visitor. I didn't know any better. So it's actually called Cloud Gate. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, get it right. Jeez, and it's built in a way that when you look at it. The shape of it reflects the skyline of Chicago. So that aspect's cool, but then move on, honestly. So where it is is Millennium Park, and Millennium Park itself is really cool. Yeah. Um, when I went to college in the South Loop, um, it was right across the street from Millennium Park, so I would eat, like, lunch there and watch all the tourists pose under the bean. <laughs> yeah. I just – I'm not into it, but I do think also in Chicago there's Navy Pier, and a lot yeah. of people to them that's straight up tourists like you know it's mm-hmm. there's tons of shops inside there's live music outside during like various times of year and like i knew it wasn't something the locals did but i still wanted to spend a couple hours mm-hmm. there because i went there when i was a kid visiting chicago and i was there with my boyfriend for the first time and i was like this is like just a kind of a cool thing but again we didn't spend our whole lives obsessing yeah. about like the bean and the pier like you know <laughs> what i mean it's like but that's why I'm saying I do understand if you want to hit something and visit it, even though you know, like, it is just sort of for the tourists. Navy Pier, actually, I will say, is kind of cool. Yeah, right? For, like, an hour. Yeah, exactly. It is Get cool. a, We got a couple even, beers just sat outside yeah, listening sure. to the music. It was yeah, nice. Yeah, Navy Pier is really cool. But Chicago, in particular, is a city made up of neighborhoods, so you have to get up north, go to the west side. Um, yes. The one touristy thing, though, I do recommend that I've done, even as someone living there, was the architectural boat tour. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Annie you... also like loves boats. I, <laughs> I love boats. I do love boats. No surprise there. Um, but it was just really cool, and just like basically going down the Chicago River, and you're surrounded by these beautiful skyscrapers. Like, it's just a really cool experience that I for sure recommend that both locals and tourists love to do. Yeah. Okay. See, that's good to know. <laughs> like, cause I do want to try to get back up there to like see my friend again. But then also like, since I was seeing somebody that lived there, I really was like, aside from these random things, I want to show my boyfriend, like, I want to go where you go. Like take yeah. me to your favorite spot to get a drink. Take me to your favorite like lunch spot or whatever. So it was really more focused on catching up and stuff. For and sure. not quite like, you know, like mm-hmm. experiencing the city as a whole. Um, and definitely skip the mag mile. Yeah. What is uh, the Mag Mile? Is that the shopping thing? Yeah, the Magnificent Mile, except... I think we stayed right off of it. Like, I think our hotel yeah. was right so there. So downtown Chicago is, like, the financial district. We call it the Loop, because that's where all the train lines converge in a literally a loop. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really the financial district. So Mag Mile runs right through that, and it's your high-end boutique stores. Like, it's just not worth it. Yeah. Like, I th- think there's a American Doll American Girl Doll. What is that? American Girl Doll, yeah. Yeah, there's a thing. giant superstore there. Why do I feel like you really like those? Because you're smiling. <laughs> you would go there. <laughs> I did have some American Girl Dolls, and I won't lie, they're still in my attic. Like, for some reason, I cannot part with them. And I played with my dolls. I wasn't that sort of person. So, like, their hair is disgusting. Like, they're not even clothed. <laughs> but they're, like, up in my attic just for, like, and I don't plan on having kids. <laughs> I literally do not know why I cannot throw these things away. Because I've heard, like, those are things that, like, because they're expensive. So, you, you buy one, and you almost like kind of pass it down to your kid or something yeah, i don't but know also like who's gonna be like oh thanks mom like nobody thanks wants to play with your 35 year old crusty doll like like but i bought it from interest. the mag mile shop yeah like, <laughs> this was an investment before yeah. you were even a twinkle in my eye no it's like shut up nobody cares about that but but i did like my american girl dolls and hold on to them for some reason okay so that is a tourist trap for you that you would indulge in uh i mean not now i'm a 31 oh, year old okay. woman <laughs> When I was like 12, absolutely. (laughs) But I do remember, like, since we're talking about high-end shopping, I think that that also lends itself to just tourist experiences. I mean, if you think about anywhere you go that is, like, attracting tourists, they all have their own version of this, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, they want you, they want your money. And for a lot of people, that is a big part of their 
travel experiences is shopping. I've always been poor, so that doesn't <laughs> matter to me. And like, and not poor, poor. You get what I'm saying, but like, not sex, sex, Fifth Avenue money, not like whatever. Versace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gucky. Yeah. But. <laughs> But I was uh, my first time in New York City, and honestly, probably the only time I've been in New York City. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, I was with my grandma and other people, but I was walking around with my grandma, and we went into Louis Vuitton, probably at my insistence, because like I was that age and like really into fashion. As I'm walking around New York City in my DKNY shirt mm. with the New York City skyline on it, because I got to pack for myself mm. that trip. You hit up the wet seal before <laughs> you went there. <laughs> Always Kohl's. I don't know what you're talking about. But like I wore anything that resembled New York to New York, which is such a cringy thing to think about. But mm. I was like a child, you know what I mean? So I thought it yeah, was cool. Yeah, you get a pass if you're a kid. I mean, I mean, old enough, I probably should. I mean, like kids today would never. Let's just put it that way. Like yeah. they're all little fashionistas. But we went into the store and I just immediately was like I don't know sweaty touristy like they had to have known we weren't buying anything like we did not belong in there at all and like but it felt very like New York to do yeah. you know what I mean to like see where the sex in the city gals like do their <laughs> shopping and whatever but like New York is a place that is just full of things that cater to tourists and it's sometimes hard to know is it worth it so this Louis Vuitton store, where, do you remember where it was located? Oh, the place, City? the place with all the shopping. So it wasn't near like Canal, because that's where all the counterfeit stuff is. Annie, I don't know the street we're on now, <laughs> so like, no, I don't so, know the no, name there's, of the street. So in New there's York. a street in New York City in Manhattan, um, and it's it runs through Chinatown. That's where you're gonna find all the counterfeit. We stuff. did, we did, I still have a shirt I got in Chinatown. Really? Yeah. And it's like horribly misspelled. No, it was like uh, Asian fashion. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I definitely shouldn't. But like, I was super into that at the time, and that whole cultural appropriate conversation really wasn't a thing in <laughs> yeah. my circle. Um, so I got it, but then also never wore it because I was like, nobody else has this. So I spent all this money on this beautiful <laughs> silk shirt that I loved, and then never wore. So well, I don't know. But I know the area you're talking yeah. about where it's like all the pop up tents and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you know, CD merchants. You know, my favorite is when uh, Supreme, the brand, blew up. And all the counterfeit stuff was coming through, but yeah. they were it was missing an R, so Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a couple years ago, not a couple years ago, quite some time ago, my sister got married in New York City, and um, so a bunch of our friends went. And the weather was awful; it was just raining the whole time. I think this was late June. So I'm with my one friend, and she's like, "God, I can I didn't bring an umbrella." I'm like, "Well, let's just go buy one. Like they might haggle you for like five bucks, but just buy an umbrella. It's Ugh. fine. It's worth it." And, of course, it's, like, this old Asian woman. You don't want to get into her because you know she's just going to break you. Yeah. So um, I'm doing my best to translate. And she looks at my friend, and she goes, $5. My friend goes, 10 I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it's that the wrong works. way. You're going the wrong way. She was like, I was just really, I was hung up on the number. And you told me 10. Wait, I'm so like, what happened when she said 10? Was she like, deal? Yeah. <laughs> she took the deal. I'm like, of course. I looked at her. I'm like, you're an idiot. Oh, <laughs> I'm my like, God. She just played you without even having to play you. Oh, that's so funny. And like, and that's <laughs> like haggling is one thing. Like, you sort of, I mean, I'm horrible at it. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not. But I'd rather almost be in that situation than I would have to, like, deal with scalpers and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that is very scary to me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't. Especially in New York when, you you know, you have uh, Madison Square Garden. You right. Have, and Jersey's right there. Um, but speaking of New York City, the other, and I don't, I just don't hate the entire state of New York. I know I already talked about Niagara Falls, <laughs> but, God, Times Square. Yep. The people who go there for New Year's Eve to watch the ball drop. Now, if it was the year when Snooki was inside the ball, I might have gone. <laughs> Wait, that was what? A, yeah, there was a year where she was petitioning to be inside the ball as it dropped. And I what a like, wild time when Snooki was a part of national conversation. Yeah, she's a national treasure. <laughs> but the people who go there, I'm like, you're going to stand there in the freezing cold. And New York in the wintertime, it's not snow. It's it's like slush. It's like th that song Betty Davis eyes, you know, like she's as pure as New York snow. That's what that refers to because it's all just brown slushy. What a diss. That's it's disgusting. Fantastic. And you're going to stand there in the cold with thousands of people and then that's it. Yeah. I don't get it. But beyond that, like Times Square itself is just such an assault on the senses. And sure. my sister told me once when her and her now husband, um, 
back then they were just dating so they're still getting to know each other she was moving apartments or something but she had to take a u-haul to new york city to pick up some stuff and she asked him to drive well she's not the greatest with directions next thing you know they're driving through times square in a <laughs> u-haul truck at rush hour traffic and he at one point looked at her and was like you're so lucky i'm into you <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I truly could not think of yeah. anything worse. Like it really, it's just a uh, nightmare. Dream, yeah. So eventually, they got married in New York City, and I'm with a couple of our mutual friends who've never been. They're like, we really want to go to Times Square. I'm like, Ugh, okay, fine. So we go to Times Square, and of course, the minute you step out of the subway, you just you just don't know where to turn. It's just everything's loud, bright, things smell weird, um, and our group got separated somehow. And I'm panicking. I'm like, oh, gosh, like, I lost my friends. Like, I'm supposed to be responsible for them. And a few minutes go by, and I look up. And you know how big those billboards are? There's a picture of my two friends on the billboard in Times Square. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> Do they do that just like crowd cams? No. So there were, at the time, I think there was an American Eagle store. And part of their thing was in front of the window was a camera. And they'd be like, hey, take a picture. You might just end up in Times Square. And they ended up on the billboard. And that's how I found them. <laughs> oh, okay. That story is epic. But also, I feel like that's kind of cool. Like, you actually just sold me more on Times Square. <laughs> like, I Do you want to pay? Like, so there's a T Dry Fridays there, right? <laughs> and they okay. No, see, this is the thing I was going to say, though. You walk through the square. You're not dining. You're not shopping. Like, if I were to take somebody there and they'd never seen it, like, you got to walk by it. You know what I mean? Kind of like in the um, Nashville episode when she was talking about Broadway. Like, yeah. don't spend all your time there, but, like, look at it. You know what I mean? Like, take a, take a look. Look and at then it. Go smell back. it because you can't avoid the smell. <laughs> and then, like, go go back about your day. You know yeah. what I mean? But I love New York City as a whole because I when my family first came to the States, that was kind of our base, right? And a lot of my family members still lived there or near there. Um, so I love New York City. I loved it as a kid. I love it as an adult. I probably recommend going across the bridge to Williamsburg instead. Uh, my niece goes to college there. Like New York City definitely holds a special place in my heart, but not in the summer. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. And not Times Square. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's fair. And like, I thought I would live in New York City for the longest time growing up. I was like, that's when you've made it. And I do still think it has that like bit of appeal you know what I mean like it's, it feels yeah. very much like you're in the big city mm -hmm. and part of that is I don't know I think if you've never been there going to the yeah. the places but I do I had a friend going to New York City and I recommended to her probably the biggest tourist trap oh no but I loved what it what was it it's called Jekyll and Hyde or something along those lines it's a restaurant like a dinner theater vibe oh I hate it already I loved it and I would <laughs> still go again but like you know they're performing and I don't know, I didn't care about like the quality of the food so I'm not going to comment on that at all because like I don't know I was a kid so I was like chicken fingers <laughs> right now I'm still like chicken fingers but it's fine <laughs> um but I recommended it to my friend as an adult and I did warn her I was like it's a very kitschy thing like you might not be into it but like stop in for a drink or something because I loved it and she also loved it so I think that's the thing too if you're gonna give recommendations make it clear like the whole experience mm -hmm. you know but in that case it worked out and she had a really good time so well I know you love theme restaurants but mm. <laughs> so and I guess I mean you're big on well you love TikTok. I'm not on it because the last thing I need is... I spend way too much time yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. But something that apparently has been trending is the Haunted House restaurant in Cleveland. Mm. <laughs> I don't have enough thumbs to give thumbs down enough for that place. So Annie, and, I hate, and I hate to bash a local restaurant, especially a local business, but it was so awful. And the way I can describe it is a Spencer's gift shop meets Chuck E. Cheese pizza. So... <laughs> Annie and I were talking before the show and we were like, let's talk about like the tourist trap of Ohio, of Cleveland. And we were sort of going back and forth. And then this restaurant came up <laughs> and I was talking with Annie before I went way like long, nothing in relation to this podcast. I just was hearing about this restaurant and I wanted to go. So I was like, yeah, I'm really excited because it's horror movie themed. So like the uh, the idea of it is great. That's yeah, why like the decor looked amazing. The, yeah. the drinks are all themed. The food's all themed. And like all I had heard from like TikTok videos or like whatever was how cool it yeah. was. And there was so much hype surrounding A this ton place of hype. when it was opening up. Yeah. So then uh, I talked to, she's like, don't go. And I'm like. 
oh like no it's it'll be fine she's like no i'm telling you like i went there and everything was just awful now annie and i weren't like as close as we are now so we had be, just met yeah so to be honest i was like she's just fancy like she just has higher <laughs> standards than i do she doesn't know the dive bars i hang out in like she like she's just I don't know, fancy. So then I totally disregard her advice and I go anyway. Oh, and mind you, I had won a gift card when I went through trivia and I was like, I don't even want this gift card. If you're going to go take the gift card. Yeah. And truly, when I tell you everything about this experience was horrible, the food was horrible, the weight was horrible, the service was horrible, like truly everything about it was awful to the point where I complained about my food. I've never done that before and I've never done it since. Like I actively left reviews trying to warn people because everything about this place was so positive. And that's another thing, too, about like if you're looking up places to go and then everybody's like, oh, it's so great. And you get there and it's horrible. It is on you to leave a review, man. Like we are a review based society. Please help out your fellow travelers. <laughs> and like, I'll see it still to this day on the Cleveland uh, subreddit. Like oh, no. people will be like, yeah, I'm planning my trip to Cleveland. Why? I I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe they got family in the area, but like, then they'll mention, I would say like six times out of 10, it's on their list. Really? Yeah. And I am like, why why i mean cleveland does have some cool attractions <laughs> um i i think the rock hall is pretty cool i that was my first that is a cleveland tourist trip. yeah now granted it is cool in a sense i think when you grow up with it too though it just becomes oh that's a really expensive museum you know what i mean but like if you mm -hmm. have never experienced it i would recommend to check it out at the same time i think when it comes to tourist traps in cleveland the first one that pops in mind is the uh, the Christmas Story House. Ooh. Okay, so <laughs> if you have somehow avoided this, the Christmas Story is a really old, mediocre Christmas movie. I've actually never even seen it. And it's not even really old. I just upset like a ton of generations, I'm sure there. But like, um, it's just like a mediocre Christmas movie that actually takes place in Indiana. But the... <laughs> I didn't know. But it was, <laughs> yeah. But it was filmed at this house in Cleveland. So, of course, Cleveland's like, this is ours now. <laughs> we <And> claim it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's like part museum, part gift shop. And there's like a 5K centered around this there house, is. too. There is. Yeah. There's uh, trolley tours all about it. Yeah. And, like, literally, it's just, I don't know. I, I've seen it because it's yeah. actually in Tremont, which is a neighborhood of um, Cleveland. And I'm like, I drove right past and didn't even know it was there yeah like. well and i was just ragging on cleveland but that's because we can do that because we're from here yeah but like there are actually a ton of really cool things you should do if you're planning your trip tons of museums beautiful yes. museums the art museum i think is still free. i was gonna say yeah i go to the uh, cleveland museum of art all the time the yeah CM, in that area where like the cma is there's the cultural gardens yeah it's oh, beautiful over love there. the cultural gardens yeah uh, our national park in general um they've taken over some of like the beachfront areas mm. there's some beautiful areas to walk like ohio city tremont like there's all these really cool authentic cleveland feeling things just try to avoid uh, this Christmas story house, whatever, anything with house in it. Don't go to the haunted house restaurant. Don't go to the Christmas story house. Just avoid those things and you'll have a true. grand old time. But we were talking about it too. And we want to know what your biggest tourist trap is in your city, in your state, in your hometown. So let us know like what we should avoid. Hopefully when we come, come to your neck of the woods. Yeah. I think um, we're, talking about you know the entirety of the u.s um for people who don't live in the u.s don't realize how big it is um so tourist attractions greatly range from really mediocre haunted houses restaurants to really amazing uh national parks the, i've only ever been to uh one national park on the west coast and that was mount rainier because mm -hmm. my best friend and her now husband live in seattle um and it was gorgeous breathtaking and of course i love um uh, markets um, so like fish markets, stuff like that. And of course I'm like, can you please take me to Pike place market? Right. Loved it. Huge tourist trap. I don't care. I loved it except for the gum wall. That's disgusting. Disgusting. <sighs> like I, I didn't even want to go see it. Just yeah. the idea of it makes my skin crawl. Like, honestly, I've been <laughs> battling some sort of stomach bug. <laughs> so even just you talking about it, I'm like, we gotta, we gotta move on. Cause just the visual, like, we're moving on. That's so gross. Okay, we're all, well, that's all we're going to say about um, that. Um, gosh, though, so now my head is spinning. So, like, for instance, like, if you are in the New Orleans area, I've been wanting to go there for a really long time. And, like, the back and forth about what is a tourist trap and what mm -hmm. isn't in a city like that, I'm so curious. So I want to know, like, the local opinions there. 
Um, and just like, yeah, all sorts of places. So please let us know the tourist trap in your area. But we just bashed the U.S. And I think it's time we take this international, Annie. Oh, my gosh. I have so many. Okay. I'm going to save it. Are we going to have to do a part two? I think we're going to do a part two. We're going to come back and we're going to take our tourist traps worldwide. So come back next week for part two when we're going to keep unpacking tourist traps. But take it global. Yeah, because no matter where you are, you are not safe from a tourist trap. Absolutely. <laughs> and then don't forget to share your travel stories and opinions with us in the comments or anywhere on social media using our hashtag Travel Stories Unpacked. And this podcast is brought to you by KHM Travel Group, a leading host agency for independent travel agents. Go to khmtravel.com to learn more.